Welcome back again. So as you saw on my page yesterday, I had um, I had a vote up to decide what I would talk about next. And I just want to thank everyone that uh, voted on that. The two choices were how I got into acting and the second choice was to go more into my CF, my cystic fibrosis or tell. Another story we'll say about that. A true story, obviously. But... Like, I was prepared for both. And because the vote, the voting was so close, I am going to talk about both, but obviously, <clears throat> one at a time. So, cystic fibrosis. Okay, so, as you know, I mentioned in my last video that I had a bit of a life-changing procedure. Now, I, I promised I would go into that, so I'm going to start today on this video. Like, obviously... As as this vlog grows or doesn't grow, depending on who watches it and who shares it and who likes it and who subscribes to it, the CF view the CF video had the most views of everything of anything I've put up so far, which is obvious because Twitter shared there was shares on Twitter and all that stuff. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so the cystic fibrosis thing. Okay, so when I was. I'm going to give ballpark figures here because obviously I was young and I can't remember too well. But basically anyway, when I was eight or nine, uh, the cystic fibrosis really had me by the fucking balls. And things weren't looking good for a while. And I had been tried on the doc my physician, doctor, I don't know what, pediat pediatric doctor, I don't know. Whatever the word is, but anyway, but... Uh, my doctor had tried multiple things to to try and offset the continuous sicknesses and chest infections I was getting and nothing seemed to be working. He even went to a stage where he had gotten um, a drug or a medication, whatever you want to call it, because I know mixing up drugs and medication can be awkward when you're going through airlines and stuff. But uh, that's, a, that's a story for another day, actually. Um, <coughs> so... He even got uh, a medication that wasn't even in Ireland at the time and was currently undergoing clinical trials. But he got that early for me because I was that sick in hospital at the time. But eventually they had tried everything and the only option left was a transplant, a heart and lung transplant. In, it was what was originally envisioned. So I was sent over to Harefield, which is a... A small town, we'll say, town slash, slash village, about 20 miles from Heathrow Airport, about 20 minutes drive, For I was sent over there for assessment. So in 94, I'm going to say, I could be wrong again, 93, 94, I went over there and I met all the, the guys over there and they did, I was the lab rat for a couple of days. <clears throat> and they put me on the list. So, like, to me, all of this stuff really went over my head. Obviously, because I was a little kid, so it didn't dawn on me how serious it really was until years later. Um, so I, I, I went home, uh, went back, tried to live a normalish life again, was waiting for this call on this gigantic black telephone that was going to come ah whatever my father would probably know a hundred times more than than i do on this subject but all i know is about three or four days before i was due to go into sixth class um my dad got the call so like me i had two ways of thinking at the time my first way was i had a mental breakdown because I didn't want to do it. I was scared. I was a child, etc., etc., etc. But there was another part of me was saying, the, the more innocent part of me was saying, "Oh, I don't have to go to school. I don't have to go back after my summer holidays. Yay, holiday to England!" But um, yeah, so a crazy situation came. I was brought into there's an ambulance place right across from the region. A lot of people will know it, Darren Raheen. In Dora Doyle and Limerick. <clears throat> I was brought in there to an ambulance station. 
and put into the back of an ambulance. Now, I wasn't sick at the time, so I was just sitting in there and it had been my first time ever being in an ambulance and it was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And the guys were really nice and they brought me, they brought me to Shannon Airport. And wait, wait till you hear this part, right? It's fucking cool, thinking back. But uh, I got on, there, when, once I got to Shannon Airport, I got into the Aer, Aer Lingus Gold Circle Lounge, which is usually reserved for VIP passengers and shit like that. And from there, I was taken to a government jet, which had just been dropping the din, tarnished at Dick Spring down to Kerry for the Rosa Tralee, and it just come back just for me. So I got into this government jet, it was a small little thing, with like five or six seats, and they took me to Heathrow Airport. And I, as, I still was kind of caught up in all the excitement of it, so I got to go up into the cockpit and look at this, all these magical buttons that I'd never seen before. I think I'd only been in a plane twice before to, for the previous trips to Heathrow. Airfield, I mean, but uh, yeah, I was on this little fucking Learjet and I was going and looking at all these buttons and I was like, oh, can I press something? And they're like, no, <laughs> no, that didn't happen. But um, yeah, so then I arrived in Heathrow and was bussed and I think in a Merc or something like that as well to this other private lounge in Heathrow and taken to Harefield in at like, I think it was like 10 o'clock at night. So we went in, got into the room. Then tensions started to rise in my own head. I was thinking, like, what the fuck is going to happen here? So they gave it, they were really nice. They were sound. They were the fucking nicest people I'd it, it wasn't like a hospital here. You were treated like a human being. And I'm not going to say any more about that. But you were treated like a human being, right? And it wasn't, as it, it wasn't a nurse-to-patient conversation. It was a person-to-person conversation. If that makes sense. So they came in and they were like, okay, Brian, what's the crack? We've got something here for you, blah, 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 blah. They gave me these tablets in a little jar. And they said, you take that and it'll be all right as rain before you know it. So basically, what I found out afterwards was these were like tranquilizer tablets they were giving me. So they're strong enough now to knock most adults and they gave me two of these tablets at i think it was 10 o'clock half 10 maybe and it takes half an hour for those to work (coughs) excuse me so i took those tablets at half one they came down to take me to theater and i was still fully awake and playing board games such is my stubbornness and determination to be an awkward cunt and the whole shenanigans happened, I bawled my eyes out, etc, etc, etc. They took me away, gassed me, and don't remember any of the rest. Woke up, the next thing I remember was being in a dark room, and a light in the corner from outside, outside in the hall, and the silhouette of my parents and my uncle who'd come up from Reading and his wife, and like my hand was like this right but i could hear my mother say wave and all i could do was like that because i could literally feel nothing else at machines everywhere tubes everywhere didn't know what the fuck was going on at all so like i could go further into this story now but i've only a minute left so <laughs> I'm going like my next video, just so you know, is going to be the acting one. And I will come back to this later in the week if you want to know more. And keeping it, I'm keeping every video now 10 minutes. Um, Because people tend to turn off after more than 10 to 12 minutes, I find with videos and stuff. Especially from what my own, my own fucking things with YouTube is I won't watch anything that's over 15 minutes because. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> but um, yeah. So if you like my videos and stuff. I'm going to put a part one on this one. If you like my videos and stuff. Continue to like and share the page. Um, and then after the acting video. I will put up another vote. Share that as well. And. 
and once and enjoy the rest of your bank holiday weekend. Live life to the fullest, I suppose. And later. <laughs>